Hey everyone, it's Mike from Motorflows and welcome back to my channel. You know, in today's video, I'm going to go over a question that was left in the comments uh, by a user. Uh, Amol said, are passive orders the stop loss orders of aggressive buyer or aggressive sellers? Um, no, they're not. And, and what this video is, I'm going to go into the difference between um, passive orders and aggressive orders and their significance. Um, this is, uh, you know, a, a topic that is related because, you know, by understanding the difference between the passive orders and the aggressive orders, you know, it leads into, you know, one of the important parts of order flow, which is imbalances. All right. So, you know, before I jump in, um, you know, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and click that notification bell so you're notified when I post a new video. And again, you know, this video is a result of a user uh, comment. So I do uh, I do go through the comments every so often. And, you know, if I find one I think that is interesting that I get asked, uh, you know, sort of repeatedly, then I, I may make a video about it. All right. So I'm all um, passive orders are not the stop loss orders of aggressive buyers or aggressive sellers. Now, um, there's a couple of things, okay, to keep in mind. Well, you know, on a footprint, right, what you have is the volume that trades on the bid at a price level, the volume trades on the offer at a price level. Now, what you have to think about as well with order flow, right, when you're looking at a footprint chart is it's the result of what's coming through, what's being traded on the bid and the offer, okay? So this is your depth of market, right? It's a simple one from Ninja Trader. And as you can see here, this market, when it closed on Friday, I'm recording this on Saturday, so the market's not open right now. It went out 61, 31 and a half bid, offered at 61, 32 and a quarter offer. There was 12 on the bid, 11 on the offer. This is when the market closed. But you know, during the day, obviously it's going up and down, right? Price is being traded on the offer, price is being traded on the bid, as opposed to on a footprint chart, you're seeing what actually traded. So what you're seeing here on this depth of market, the price ladder is the best bids below the current bid and the best offers above the current offer, all right? But what you're looking at on the footprint is what's actually traded, all right? So what you have is a bid and the offer. So people that are sitting on the bid, okay, are trying to buy it at a specific price. People that are sitting on the offer are passive sellers, right? They're trying to sell it at a, spe at a specific price. So let's take a look here. I made some notes. So passive orders are going to be limit orders, either bids or offers, right? It doesn't have to be the best bid or the best offer. It could be something sitting in the book, right? It could be below the market or above the market. Now, aggressive orders are basically market orders, which, you know, can be triggered stops. I mean, there's different types of orders. I mean, if you're trading, you know that you could enter on a limit, you know, you could enter on a stop, you could enter at the market. And when you have a stop order gets triggered, it becomes a market order. Okay, so passive orders, aggressive orders, there's two types of orders. I mean, there's there's sub categories there, but basically the main two types are passive orders and limit or, or sorry, passive orders and aggressive orders. However, there's going to be four types of traders. You're going to have passive buyers, passive sellers, aggressive buyers, and aggressive sellers, right? Because remember, passive orders, aggressive orders, so you break that down in between buyers and sellers. So you're going to have passive buyers, passive sellers, aggressive buyers, aggressive sellers. So passive buyers, they buy from aggressive sellers. Passive sellers sell to aggressive buyers. And the easiest way to think about it is, okay, so if you're a passive seller, you're going to be trying to sell it on the offer or above, right? You're waiting for the market to come to you. If you're going to be aggressive, if you're an aggressive seller, oh, I got to, I got to get out of this position right now, right? You're going to be aggressive. You're going to cross the bid offer line and sell to who? A passive buyer, somebody that's a passive buyer working a limit order to buy, okay? Now, aggressive buyers buy from whom? They buy from passive sellers, okay? So all this, all this limit up here, all this liquidity, this is passive orders, passive sellers, okay? All this buying liquidity here, right on the bid and below are passive buyers so aggressive sellers sell to passive buyers right people are trying to buy it at a specific price 
Aggressive buyers buy from passive sellers, people who are trying to sell it at a specific price. And when you look at the footprint, right, you're going to see areas where there is imbalances, right? Like right here on this red candle, four against 34, right? This is a buying imbalance here. So in this two-way auction between 61.31 and a half and 61.32, there's only four aggressive sellers going into the bid at 61. 31 and a half, right? Versus uh, 34 aggressive buyers buying it at 61.32. So these aggressive buyers, the people that bought it aggressively here at 32, who did they buy it from? They bought it from passive sellers. Just as who did the aggressive sellers sell four contracts to? They sold it to the passive buyers. Okay, so if it's a limit on the bid side, it's basically... Uh, passive buyer. If it's a limit on the offer side, it's a passive seller. So let's talk a little bit about the differences, right? So passive orders, like I said, are limit orders. They're resting in the order book. Limit orders are placed at specific levels and wait to be filled, right? They might not get filled, right? If, if you're, that's the one of the, the things. If you are, if the market is 31 and a half at 32 and a quarter, and you're trying to buy it at 30, Right, you're on the bid down here. You might not get filled. You might not even get filled if you're on the bid at 61, 31 and a half as it's currently 31 and a half at 32. It could just start trading up and you never get filled. Okay. With the market order, you are crossing that bid offer. You want to get filled and you're going to buy or sell at the best bid or if you're buying at the best offer. So a limit order is an order at a specific price. Traders specify the exact price at which they're willing to buy or sell. And like I just said, there's no guarantee of execution. The order may not be filled if the market price doesn't reach the specific specified level. Limit orders provide liquidity in the market, right? They add depth to the market by either offering to buy at a certain price or they're offering to sell at a certain price. They are providing that liquidity. This is liquidity in the market here. People come in and offer it out. They provide the liquidity. It's the people that remove the liquidity who are the aggressive traders. So the, dif the difference between aggressive orders, right, which are market orders and, and stops that become market orders. When, say, you have a stop order, okay, say, um, you know, say you sold it here at, at 31 and a, and a half, Right, you put a buy stop in here at 34 to protect yourself. If the market trades up to 34, it triggers to a market order. So your your buy stop at 34. Once it trades 34, the the uh, program at the exchange knows that okay, that's a market, that's a stop order. It traded there, and it becomes a market order to buy at the market, and it'll buy it most likely at 34 and a quarter. Right, unless there's a lot of orders there and it, it jumps up, maybe you get a tick or two of slippage and you pay 34 and a half. Okay, so aggressive orders provide immediate execution. They're filled as quickly as possible at the best available price. Now just bear in mind though, you know, like I said, they, they're filled as quickly as possible, but even within market orders, there is still a queue system, right? You don't really think about it, but when you see, like uh, for example, here, right, where you see zero, 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 one on the price, or sorry, on the volume at these prices, right? You see buying and balance, buying and balance, buying and balance, buying and balance coming up. Well, there might have been a stop here at 32 that got triggered to buy, you know, 100 or, or say 250 contracts. That's why you have, you know, 80, 116, there, 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 these imbalances is because that first order, first stop order in the queue is being executed and if there's another one that came in behind it first the the order that was in there before that you know that the 250 lots would be the first one that's executed your two lot to buy at the same price since it went in after that other 250 lot your order will be executed as soon as that first order the the order right in front the 250 lots so just bear that in mind right it's not like you're all competing for the same thing. It's all being released at the same time. There, even within stops, there is um, a queue. Just as you know, in limit orders, there there is a queue. 
Now you have price uncertainty. The exact execution price may vary slightly from the price at the time of order placement, or let's say order placement, but rather order, well, order placement, or if it, in the case of a stop triggered, right? Because you know if you've ever used uh, Ninja Trader or any other platform and you enter a stop order, or sorry, a market order, right? You think, okay, I'm going to just buy at the market, right? And it's 32 and a quarter offer. Next thing you know, you're filled at two and three quarters, right? Because there's a lot of trading going on, really, even from the time you click submit to the time the order hits the exchange where the current bid offer is, right? I mean, you know, the markets move fast, okay? So just bear that in mind. Then obviously that is called slippage, right? We all understand what the concept of slippage is. That's what slippage is. You know, in the old days, you know, people nowadays, we complain about, oh, you know, I, I was filled, you know, Marcus, two and a quarter offered. I'm filled at two and three quarters. You know, in the, in the old days of open outcry, bit trading, you know, sometimes you wouldn't even get your fill back for a day, you know, especially in, in mail confirmations. Um, it could be a couple of days, but, you know, you'd place, you'd call your broker, he'd call down, you know, if your broker had floor access the broker would call down to the floor and hopefully if the order is big enough they can hand signal it in otherwise um you know they would run it in you can say you got to wait for the runner to you know you gotta wait for the phone clerk to take the order fold the paper run it to the pit if it's a market order you know hopefully the broker would fill it instantly and get it back otherwise you know he was just sort of he'd fill it and stick it in his pocket and then you sort of got to wait a little bit and then uh you know so you could be waiting a while and the price that you saw on the screen when you place the order will be very different than your execution price on a market order but we live in uh better days now in the sense of uh trans not transparency but uh, order execution so liquidity removal right market orders which are aggressive orders consume existing orders in the order book right which helps to um move price but they are basically removing liquidity from the market right you re imagine right if someone it's give you an idea what i'm talking about right someone provides liquidity okay i'll offer 11 at 32 and a quarter well someone buys the 11 they've just removed that liquidity okay so that that's you know sometimes you hear the term um liquidity providers that's what a liquidity provider does, right? That's what a market maker does. He provides bids and offers. It's the uh, people that are being aggressive and removing the liquidity from the market. And urgency, aggressive order, so strong buying or selling pressure, right? I, I explained the whole concept of imbalances in the market, okay? And imbalances, obviously, are going to be caused by aggressive traders, right? And... um Getting to one step further with uh, Delta, right, is the net difference between aggressive buyers and aggressive sellers in a bar. So if a bar, right, like this red, big red candle's got negative Delta of minus 1,079, that's not the volume. The volume's in this bar, 3,800. But what the 1,079 is, is the difference between net aggressive selling and net aggressive buying in a bar. Okay, and, and there's ways to use Delta. Um, I've created a lot of videos on, on ways to interpret Delta. <coughs> Just as here, you have this bar's got positive Delta, 1625, right? So again, that's not the volume for the bar. That's telling you that there was 1,625 more aggressive buyers than aggressive sellers in a bar, okay? And, and Delta is it's a useful tool for order flow traders because it's it's data from the market, okay? And, you know, Data is, depending on, on how you use it, it can be, uh, can be a gold mine. So, all right, anyone. So I, I hope that uh, helps uh, Amol with uh, your question. Again, you know, thanks for uh, putting your question out there. there. There's a question I'm going to get to, hopefully this, uh, this weekend, on covering TradingView versus NinjaTrader footprints right because trading view does have a footprint but there are some things you do need to know about using the trading view footprint that uh, you have to be aware of okay so thanks i'll catch you guys on that next video take care bye bye